church. Good morning. Good morning. It was nice to do this reading for Remembrance Day, and it gives me an honor to do it and a privilege to do it in this day and age. But anyway, I'm just going to read it, and I pray that whoever hears it will be blessed by it, and those that's gone before us, our ancestors, will also be blessed. We gather today to remember the lives of fellow Canadians and all our allies who have given their lives to achieve peace and freedom. We also remember in the ear, okay, in the ear and on the land and in the sea they did it. We remember the lives lost in World War I, World War II, Korea, and the peacekeeping operation in Afghanistan. We also remember those in times of conflict and difficult operations survived but now live with the memories. We give thanks to, for the sacrifice of the many who have paid the ultimate price for the freedom, peace, and privilege that we who follow enjoy today. Good morning, church. Good morning. In Flanders Field, in Flanders Fields, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place and in the sky, the larks still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are dead short days ago. We lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you, from failing hands, we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. <laughs>
generations, Canadians have dedicated their lives for peace, freedom, and justice in this country. And today, we offer thanks and gratitude for their service to this country. But we also give special recognition to those who served our country in spite of the prejudice they experienced. To those who were told it was a white man's war and fought against the prejudice so that they could fight in the war. Today, we remember those who served in the number two construction battalion. And if you are here today and you are descendants of those who served in the number two construction battalion, we ask you to stand so that we can honor the legacy of your family members. Praise God. Look around, folks. Look around. Praise God. We honor their legacy. Would you please stand us for a moment of silence? The act of remembrance. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. Sure. You may be seated. I'm prophesying over them this morning. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I tell you, it's so good to see Brother Joshua on the drums this morning. We thank God for you. Amen, amen. I just got excited this morning. I walked in. I just seen the different people serving on the back there. We got Sister uh, Tanya and Mariah's back there. Praise God. And look how beautiful the choir looks this morning. Did they, did they worship, not worship this morning and usher into the presence of God? Truly, it is so good to be here in the house of the Lord today. I'm still reeling from pastoral appreciation, you know. Lord have mercy. I got to tell you, I'm so excited. It's just a blessing to look up and to see your faces today. I feel truly humbled to be here to serve this season. I really do. Minister to us, please.
just rest right there. Just stand to your feet for our scripture reading for this morning, taken from Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Father, in this preaching hour, God, I just present to you my vessel, my humble vessel, God, to be used by you. Father, I ask that the Holy Spirit that's on the inside of me rise up now, take over my mouthpiece, anoint me afresh from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. God, I don't want to miss anything you want to say or do. Hide me behind the cross this morning, that they would see Jesus Christ high and lifted up. Give me clarity and articulation of speech. Father, I thank you that in the preaching hour, I I heard you, the preparation hour, I heard you, God, speaking to my spirit that this is a season for the people of God to be transformed. Father, give them ears to hear what the spirit of God is saying. It's not about what I'm saying this morning, God, but it's about what the spirit of God is speaking into the ears of the hearer. Bless your word as it goes forth, God, that it will do exactly what you intended it to do and that it will not return void. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So we are in our new preaching series entitled, Transformed by the Spirit. And this morning I want to preach on, are you conforming or transforming? You see, in this text this morning, Paul is speaking to believers. He's speaking to those of us who call ourselves Christians. He's speaking to those in Rome, and he's speaking to us, and he is saying to us, the believers, we are either being conformed to this world, or we are being transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. If you are a believer, that's the question for you this morning. Are you conforming to the ways of this world, or are you being transformed? into the image of Jesus Christ. Church, God wants to establish his image in us so that he can fulfill the destiny that he has for your life. Paul is speaking to believers in Rome and he is reminding them that in chapters 1 through to 11, they have received the teaching about the doctrine of the Christian faith. And so he reminds them of what God has done for them in those first 11 chapters. Paul is saying, remember? Remember that God freed you from the death and sin, from the sin of death? Remember? That the wages of sin is death, but God gave you the gift of eternal life in Jesus Christ. Paul is saying, remember that because you were justified by faith, you have peace with God through Jesus Christ. He says, remember, remember that by faith you have been given access to his grace. He said, remember that you have been saved from the wrath of God. He said, remember, remember all of that. Paul is saying, and in light of all that God has done for you. Oh, can somebody testify this morning? In light of what God has done for you, Paul is saying, I beseech you, I implore you, I urge you, I ask you, I plead with you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable act of service. What well, one Bible uh, translation said, which is your spiritual service of worship. See, a living sacrifice, a living sacrifice must have sounded odd to those who were hearing Paul's words. Because you see, in ancient biblical days, the people were used to bringing a live animal to the priest 
who would kill the animal as a sacrifice and atoning for their sin. But Paul is saying that because what Christ did on the cross for us, we no longer have to bring a sacrifice to the priest. Instead, Paul is saying your bodies are a living sacrifice. Oh, come on, somebody. It's going to be a tight message this morning. But it's the word of the Lord. We are not a burnt offering. We are a living offering. We come before God and offer our complete gratitude and thanksgiving. We offer up all the parts of our body. We offer up our eyes. We offer up our ears, our lips, our hands, our feet, our heart, and our mind in service to Him and doing His will. The question is, which part of your bodies are you offering and laying on the altar this morning? Is it your feet? Because your feet are taking you places that you shouldn't go and doing things that you shouldn't do. Are you laying your feet on the altar this morning? Maybe it's your eyes that you need to lay on the altar this morning because they're watching pornographic movies or they're watching things on TV, searching on the internet for things that lead you away from Christ. Come on, let's be truthful. We know that the things we say, the things we look at, the things we do, the music we listen to, the gossip and all the things we listen to are not always acceptable and pleasing to God. Maybe uh, you're not laying your feet or your eyes on the altar, but maybe you're laying your mouth on the altar. Because of the gossip, because you use profanity, because you curse using the Lord's name. Maybe you're laying your mouth on the altar. If you're not laying your mouth, is it your heart that you're laying on the altar? Maybe you're laying your heart on the altar because it's full of anger and unforgiveness. And I'm here to tell you that that anger and forgiveness turns into deep-rooted bitterness. And it's like poison in your body, killing you spiritually. And maybe it's your mind that you need to lay on the altar this morning. Because every moment of every day, you and I have the freedom to think about whatever we want. Our minds may be filled with worries and lust, depression, and truly the thoughts that you choose to dwell on are the most important factors in how you feel and what you say and do. Ultimately, church, your thinking determines the kind of person that you become. That's what Proverbs says. A person thinks in his heart that who he or she becomes. That's who you become. What you think about can hinder or enhance your walk with Jesus Christ. Church, our mind is the key to living this Christian life. Our mind is the key. That's why we got to mind what we're thinking about. Because the word of God told us to pull down all those thoughts, pull down all those suggestions, pull down all those lofty ideas, he said, and bring them into captivity in accordance to God's word. So when that thought of fear comes, God says, you got to bring it into captivity to my word. He says, God have not given you a spirit of fear, but a power and a love and of a sound mind. And when the enemy comes with thoughts of guilt and shame, you got to declare that the word of God says that my sins are forgiven and they have been cast into the sea of forgetfulness. Heaven worry comes and the Lord says, I am your protector. I am your shield and debunker. I am your Jehovah Jireh. I am your provider. Whenever those thoughts, ideas, and suggestions come, you got to pull them down. I had to go to a season that was a one thought that the enemy kept messing with my mind up. And I got to the place that every time it came, I said, I pull it down. And I literally was pulling it down. Sometimes you got to do things in the natural so that you can feel it in the spirit. Pull it down. And we know all too well that full surrender to God can be difficult. It's difficult because there are certain parts of our life that we want to maintain freedom and control of. Oh, come on. Can I do Come on. Can we talk to you this morning? You see, there are some things in our life that we like and we don't want to surrender to God. I already know. You got to testify. Yes, I will. There were some things in my life. Yes, sir. See, it's difficult because of our ambitions and possessions become more important to us than the things of God. See, it's more important to you to drive a fancy car. It's more important to you to have a house. It's more important to you to dress up with your high heels and walk around. It's more important those things are than it is to the things of God. I wonder this morning what's important to you. I know this is a hard word, but it's the season of transformation. It's difficult because we don't always 
always want to sacrifice. Well, I can't do that for God. Now, possibly we trying to build a, a new church. And so I say, well, can you all give an extra $20? Well, I can't do that. Mm -mm -mm. That's a sacrifice. See, we don't want to sacrifice for the things of God. So instead of sacrificing for the things of God, here's what happens. Instead of us transforming into the image of Jesus Christ, we, trans we conform to the ways of the world. We like to hold on to the stuff of the world. Yes, we do. Because well, well, the stuff of the world is it's, it's enticing. The stuff of the world feel good. I remember when I smoked. I said, oh, that cigarette tastes so good. <laughs> it's enticing. Yes. But it's a trap. Yes. It's a trap of the world to make you think that it feels good, that it's right. Because Satan wants us to conform to the ways of the world. And God says, no, 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 no. You got to transform. I got to transform you into the image of my son, Jesus Christ. Paul is saying that as believers, we need to respond to God out of a heart of gratitude for what he has done for us. When you think about what he did on the cross, I don't know about you, but sometimes when I think about his sacrifice, I just start weeping. God, you did it for me. Me and all my mess. Me and all my sin. You died for me. Remember, it was by God's mercy that you and I were saved. It was because of God's loving kindness towards us. Not because you and I did anything righteous. No, it was because of his mercy. God saved us not because we deserved it either. No, no, no. He did it because of his mercy and his grace. You see, because of his mercy and grace, we were born again, made alive spiritually by the Holy Spirit, which was poured out into us abundantly. Do you know that as a believer of God, you've got God living on the inside of you? The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. And if you've got God living on the inside of you, you got the power of God available to you. Oh, see, sometimes we walk around as believers and I don't think we understand who we are or the power that we have from within us. Oh boy, see, that's another sermon. I can preach on that right there. Shh, the power. But because of his mercy and grace, see, Paul says, I beseech you, those of you who are believers, those of you who call yourselves Christians, I beseech you to live a lifestyle that is worthy of all that God has done for you. Church, as believers, we are to live a lifestyle that is holy. We are to live a lifestyle of worship. See, see, sometimes we make the mistake of thinking that worship is when we come and we give God praise and we lift our hands and we say, oh, we had a worship service this morning. Yes, we did. But Paul is saying in this text that worship is a lifestyle. How you live is your spiritual act of worship to God who has done so much for you. We are to live a lifestyle that expresses complete devotion to God. We are to live a lifestyle that is set apart and pleasing to God. And the question this morning is, are you living a lifestyle that is pleasing to God? What would he say about the way you are living right now? Completely devoted to him? Or are you being molded and conformed by the world in which we live? You see, there is a reason Paul is telling us to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Because see, Paul knows that there is something about these bodies. He knows that there is something about our flesh that can keep us from worshiping God in spirit and truth. You see, yes, 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 don't get me wrong. Yes, as believers, our souls are already saved. But our body, our flesh, is the problem. Can somebody say amen? amen. I'm here to tell you that we're all saved, but we all got a flesh problem. Hello, somebody. And the reality is, is that we need to be transformed. Yeah, yes, we do. And, and so, specifically, we read in Galatians, and Paul says, this is the work of the flesh in Galatians 5, 19 to 20. You don't have to believe pastor, go home and read it for yourself. I say a Bible study, every time I preach a word, you better go home and look it up for yourself. And if pastor ain't preaching right, you better call me up. 
Yes, you bet. He said that these are the works of the flesh, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealous, fits of anger, rivalries, dissension, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies. Paul said these are the works of the flesh. Paul understood that there is a never-ending conflict between the saved soul and this lost flesh. Oh my goodness. I know I'm preaching good to myself this morning. I got convicted when I was even doing the work. I can tell you, you think I get this work for you? Like what? Yeah, God's jacking me up. Yes, he is. See, our soul is renewed and it agrees with the ways of heaven. But our flesh is not yet renewed. And it still has, it still has some habits that run according to the principles of the world. We want to do like the world does. But the way the world. When Paul speaks about the principles of the world, he is referring to the popular world view. And what that is, is they reject God and they reject his revelation and they reject his truth. See, the world view calls right those things which God calls wrong. Can I get an amen this morning? See, see the world view ignores God's truth and establishes their own truth. The world view is patterned after Satan and has been ever since Adam fell in the Garden of Eden. See, the world view leads to death, destruction, and eternal damnation. Paul is saying, church, even though our souls and our hearts are cleansed by salvation through Jesus Christ, the flesh and the mind remain susceptible to carnal desires and the things of the world. We need to be transformed. As a matter of fact, some of y'all can testify that the flesh still yearns the earthly satisfaction. And Paul is saying God wants our obedience he wants our commitment to love and worship Him by giving of ourselves to Him. He wants us to be a living sacrifice. Yes, God possesses our souls at salvation. And now, He says, I desire your physical bodies in which my soul is housed to be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to Him. You see, I don't know about you, but when, when, when the Lord started working on me and I started reading his word and getting into his word, I, every time I was doing something that the Holy Spirit on the inside of me started convicting me. So here's the thing about the Holy Spirit. He will convict you, but some of us just want to ignore his conviction. But he will work on the inside of you, drawing you away from the things of the world. Church... We are called to be in the world, but not of it. And I'm here to tell you, every Christian will be tested by this reality. Paul is saying now that we are saved by the mercy of God, we must live differently from when we did when we were lost. How is it you got saved and you still live the same old way before you got saved? That's a problem. Then I gotta ask the question, was you really saved? Because uh, if you have saved, there needs to be some transformation. In order for us to truly worship God in the physical realm, with our physical bodies, there must be a spiritual transformation. Because our bodies have yet to be redeemed. We must continually, you hear me? Continually yield these, this body, this flesh, to the leading of the Lord. Amen. That's why Paul warned us. He said, don't let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey its lust. Paul is saying we have to stop. We have to stop presenting the members of our body to sin as instruments of unrighteousness. But present them to God as instruments of righteousness. Now that you are saved, you are no longer living according to your flesh. 
you gotta tell your flesh, I ain't living. <laughs> no, 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 no. I ain't living according to you no more because now that we're saved, we live according to the Spirit of God. And I want you to know, church, that the carnal mind is an enemy against God because it is not subject to the law of God, which is the Word of God. And therefore, Colossians 3 and 5 says, Now is the time to put to death whatever belongs to your earthly nature. See, there are some things in your life that today got to die. There are some things that must be put to death. You're going to tell sexual immorality, die. Impurity, die. Evil desires and greed, you've got to die. Gossip, die. Killing you too. Lying and cheating, die. What do you need to kill this morning? See, that thing that's keeping you from transforming into the image of Jesus Christ, you're going to tell yourself it has got to to die. See, some of us this morning are going to have a funeral service up in here today because there are some things we're going to put to death. We're going to bury. Yes, we are. First Corinthians says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old is gone and the new is here. Tell somebody I'm walking over here new today because I'm about to kill some stuff up in here. There's some things up in here is going to die. I ain't taking with me um, when I came in. I'm leaving here today and I'm laying it on the altar of sacrifice. I want to remind you this morning, church, that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is the same spirit that is working in you. The same power within you to overcome your desires. To overcome temptation. Tell somebody I got the power in me to kill that thing. I'm going to kill it. I'm going to put it to death. Yes, I am. Lord, I'm getting excited. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Church, Paul is saying that if we are to be living sacrifices to the Lord, then we cannot conform or follow the patterns and the schemes of this world. We must be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Paul is saying don't be molded by the world's way of thinking and being. Because when the world start talking, we think they're right. Yeah. We start conforming to their way of thinking. Yeah. How do we conform to the world? They don't even know who Jesus is. Yes. They don't even know we ought to be the ones who set the example that we cause the world to be transformed and conform to the things of God. Amen. Don't be like the evil world in which we live, but be transformed. Yeah. Transformed is the Greek word is metamorpho, which is where we get the word metamorphosis. And see, the change that Paul is talking about is so substantial that he uses the Greek word metamorpho, which means translated in our language, means transformed. So how many know caterpillars? You see, in the same way, a caterpillar enters into the cocoon as a caterpillar. But when he emerges, he emerges as a glorious butterfly. You see, after the caterpillar transforms, there is very little resemblance between the caterpillar and the butterfly. And that church is how God wants to transform us. We cannot continue to live and think like everybody else because God has brought us from life to death. And now we are in the process of being transformed and to the image of his son, Jesus Christ. We are being transformed into having the mind of Christ. Tell on somebody, now you're gonna pray that over yourself in the morning. I thank you, Lord, that I'm being transformed into the image of Christ. I thank you, Lord, that I got the mind of Christ. My brothers and sisters, I got to tell you, status quo has got to go. It's got to go. Our thinking must be transformed from old, ugly, uh, ungodly ways of thinking into new godly ways of thinking and being. Church, the only way to replace the error of the world's way of thinking is to replace it with God's word. We learned that in Bible study. The only infallible source of God's truth is revealed in his word, the Bible. The B-I-B-L-E. That's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God. The B-I-B-L-E. That's the word shoot me and the B-I is a bull. You know what? I ain't gonna say. But anyhow, that's what it is. Let's see. The, uh, and the only available source is God's revealed word 
is the Bible. You see, transformation through a renewed mind can only come as we as believers expose ourselves to God's word by reading it, by studying it, by showing up when somebody's teaching it, by preaching and meditating on his word day and night. When I wake up in the morning, Lord, I will meditate on your word. When I lay down at night before I go to sleep, Lord, I will meditate on your word. See, God wants to transform us by his word and the power of the Holy Spirit. God's word will bring super, sorry, spiritual life and will begin to, you will begin to think differently. You will begin to walk differently. You'll begin to talk differently. Do you know anybody who's been transformed? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they think different. Sometimes the world thinks we crazy. But that's what the Bible said. All of us is foolishness to the, uh, to the world. I'll tell you right now, when the people from Windsor Plains, God started transforming me, they said, who are you? They want to remind you what you used to be, right? How people want to do you that? God done all this transformation in my life and you want to remind me what I used to be. I said, uh, 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 I know who I am now. Yes, sir, me. Church, I'm here to tell you, God's word is the filter. See, the only way you can know what is holy and acceptable to God is to filter it through his word. The only way you can be transformed is by the Holy Spirit working in you through the Word of God. The more we are in God's Word, the more we will transform into the image of His Son. Remember this, church, that every action begins with a thought in your mind. And when that thought comes, you better filter it through the Word of God. When the world tells you their truth, you better filter it through the word of God. Yes, sir. Filter everything through the word of God so that you can transform like the butterfly. When people see you, they won't be able to resist, see the resemblance between the old you and the new you that's been transformed. I don't know about you this morning, but I have been conforming to the patterns and schemes of the world for way too long. You see, I had embraced the lies of the world, just like some of us are this morning. But I'm here to tell you, watch out for the world, because the Bible tells us that we are at war with the world who wants to conform us. I mean, I did things, I said things, and I lived in a way that wasn't pleasing to God. Y'all go tell everybody, you know, Pastor, she had a rough life. Yes, she did. She was a real sinner. Yes, and I've been saved by grace, and now I'm transformed, and I'm continually to be transformed. And I'll tell you, the transformation really didn't stop for me until I showed up at Emmanuel Baptist Church, because see, there there was some good teaching. Yes, and there was some preaching on the solid Word of God, and then I started to have my own personal Bible study, and I showed up. Every time there was a class being taught, I was the first one there, getting the word. I said, oh, no, no, that devil won't trip me up no more. I have that much word in me, and the reason some of y'all, when the enemy comes at you, you don't know what to do, because if you got no word in, you got no word to come out. You trying to pray. <laughs> word in, word out. This is the season to be transformed, and it's going to be because of the word that's in you. Everything of the word I started filtering through God's word. I was be able to resist the temptations that came my way. And whenever they came my way, I recalled the word of God. I recalled how Jesus himself resisted the temptation of sin. What did Jesus say? Man don't live by bread alone, but by every word of God. That's how we supposed to live. We must do the same. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. You know, I said one Sunday, if you up there and he's ready, want you to take your clothes off, you better resist the devil and flee. I say, run, get out of here, get out of Dodge, get out of Dodge, get out of Dodge, run. Because of God's word, you know what? I was able to forgive my ex-husband. See, some of us this morning are holding on to bitterness and anger for somebody who ain't even in your life no more. 
come on, can we just forgive? I'm going to tell you that bitterness that, that, that I was holding against that man who I said, he did me so wrong. He had somebody else I was going on. And one day God just spoke to me. Look at you. You can't be a living sacrifice for me. You got too much poison in you. And that was the day that I fell down at the altar. I laid it at the altar. I said, Lord, I'm not walking in this no more. I said, I'm laying at the foot of the cross and I'm never picking it up again. And that's the same man I had dinner with, with the family. We all got together. That's how God works. Now, I'm not saying you gotta be getting together with your axes. Now, just tell me. That was for the grandchildren, right? But we got to learn to forgive. We got to learn. I gotta tell you, in church, you know what? In church, there is so much unforgiveness and bitterness and people holding on to stuff. You don't even know why you're holding on. You don't like sister so-and-so and brother so-and-so. And you even forgot why you don't even like them. Hello, somebody. Be Yes, I did. Yes, I did. But the word of God showed me that he was the deliverer. You see, there was a time that I had a lot of addictions to me. Can I talk to somebody this morning who's got some stuff you've been holding on? Can I talk to somebody who's got some addiction? They got a strong hold on you. I want to talk to somebody this morning. I want to tell you that when I saw it in the word of God that said he is the deliverer, I want to tell you something. I started it in my mind. Myself delivered. See, some of y'all can't see yourself delivered. Some of y'all can't see yourself happy because you're made up in your mind that you can't be. I want to know this morning can you see yourself set free? Can you see yourself walking in what God has for you? Can you see yourself coming out of darkness and into His darkness? I want to know can you see it in your heart this morning? Can somebody see it? Praise God. that you can have victory in your life, starting right now. Right now. Right now. Jesus already won the victory on the cross so that you could have victory in your life. So why are you living like a victim when God gave you the victory? Hello, somebody. You see, victory is not circumstantial. It's about the state of your mind. Victory in your life starts with thinking victory in your mind. See, it's about winning the battle in your mind. Do you know the only place that Satan can get you is in your mind? Yes. That's the only place he can get you. Yes. You see, instead of attacking people, why don't you attack the thoughts in your mind? We spend way too much time attacking everybody else. Why don't you just spend some time attacking the thoughts that's in your mind? Too many of us have, of us have given certain thoughts a permanent parking space in our mind. But tell your neighbor, your meter just expired. You gotta get up out of here. the things of this world and we valued the things of the world and our thinking revolved around those things and our value system reflected were reflected in our hearts in relation to the world you see we were captivated by material goods we were captivated by money and fame we were captivated and all of those things led us in the direction of a life of drugs a life of crime a life of violence a life of prostitution and theft and doing it all in the name of money. But I'm here to tell you this morning, but wealth can go no further than the grave. Hello, somebody. It can't go no further than the grave. Wealth is a physical, wealth is physical, while Christ's character is spiritual and it will go beyond the grave into eternity. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Church, 
If you are not transformed, then you will become what you worship because we revere what we resemble. As believers, our thinking and value system, it will, you hear me, it will change from the old to the new when we stay in his word. You see, our new value system says, I'm more concerned with God's will than my own. It says I'm more, I care more about what God thinks than what people think. I care less about keeping up with the Joneses and more about keeping in step with God and his desires for my life. Church in closing, Jesus willingly sacrificed his life on the cross for us. Will you today willingly choose to be a living sacrifice for him? As you examine your life this morning, ask yourself the question, where are the areas that I truly presented yourself to God as a living sacrifice? Ask yourself, has your thinking changed? Has your life changed? Has your behavior changed? Pause and ask God to show you where more change and transformation is needed to take place. Is God truly your heart's desire and not the stuff of the world? Do you long to break loose from the conformity of the world? Do you long transformed and new from the inside out. Do you long to be free from the mere duty driven Christianity? And do you do what you love to do because what you love to do is what you ought to do? Do you long to offer up your body as a living sacrifice so that your whole life becomes a spiritual act of worship and displays the worth of Christ above the worth of the world. Sisters and brothers, transformation is not something that you can do on your own. You need the Holy Spirit working through the Word of God to lead, guide, and direct you. See, by ourselves, we can do very little. But by faith we follow Christ, we will grow into the image of Him. Yes, it can be difficult for us to change. But when we want to put off doing what we know we should not do, we must cling to God. And He will lead us out of conformity. See, the whole purpose of transformation is for us as believers to become like Christ, so that God can use us for his purpose and glory. But there are things you need to lay at the altar of sacrifice. I'm asking you this morning, what parts of your body are you willing to lay at the altar of sacrifice this morning that has been standing in the way of your transformation? See, it's time, church. It's time for us to stop conforming to the ways of this world and be transformed by the renewing of our mind through God's word and power of the Holy Spirit. This morning, the altar is open for you. There's an altar, symbolic altar this morning. And today, you can come to this altar, give yourself over to Christ so that he can transform you so that he can transform you into his image and so that he can you can have the destiny that he planned for you from the very beginning if that's you this morning and you're here and you heard the word and the spirit of god spoke to you there are those of us who are here who will pray with you no longer church we can't just keep coming to church Sunday after Sunday, hear the truth of God's word, and walk out the door, and nothing changes. If you're here.
this morning and you have never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today is the day. Would you make a decision today just to give yourself away? Say, Jesus, I need you in my life. I want to live for you. I want to be a living sacrifice for you. I want to be the person that people see my life on display by the way that I live, by the lifestyle that I live. And because I live that lifestyle, that others will be able to be drawn to the Father. I give myself away. Jesus. 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 Jesus.